Cool. So with that being said, because we had mentioned some stuff with some neck going on, both Sandy and Erica, I think we're going to start, I mean, ultimately we're going to start on the floor laying on her back, but before we do that, let's go ahead and sit up. And I want you to just sit on something, whether it's a block or a blanket. And all that you're going to do is I want you to bring, so you'll take your left hand and bring it to the back of your occipital ridge. So it's that bone at the base of your skull. And I want you to lightly dig your fingers into that bone and you're gonna pull up and then pull your left hand to the left as you push back with the right occipital bone to the right. And it should start to find stuff that's happening on the right side of the neck. So left hand back of right occipital bone. You're pushing right occipital bone back and to the right as you pull your fingers into the back of your head and pull it to the left. And you might slightly bend the head, you might not, but you're just seeing if you can breathe into that. And then some of you will notice what happens if you lift the right shoulder a little bit and lower the right shoulder. What happens if you draw the right shoulder back, if you draw the right shoulder forward, Barbara's making faces. So maybe that's a good thing we're finding stuff. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. And the thing that you're really paying attention to in all of this is that you're really pushing the head back as you're pulling the head forward and on that diagonal. And then gently you might start to turn your head so your chin comes down towards the right pec, right, sorry, left pec, left knee, and then maybe goes up towards the sky. And you're just continuing to push the head into the hands, pull the hands into the head. And when you feel a little release from that, you'll go gently, gently, gently release the left hand, bring the head back to center if you haven't already, and just observe if you notice anything between the two sides. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and try the other side. So right hand comes to the back, you grab the left occipital ridge, so it's that bone at the bottom, and you're gonna dig the fingers in and pull them slightly to the right as you push your head back to the left. And you might dip the right ear towards the right a little bit, you might not, but we're just trying to find length on the left side. You might notice what happens if you elevate the left shoulder blade so it comes up or depress the left shoulder blade so it goes down. You might notice if you protract and retract that left shoulder so it goes forward and it goes back. And you might also observe like maybe you just wanna turn your chin down towards your right armpit or turn your chin slightly up to the sky. And you're just really continuing to push the head back and pull the hands forward. And when you feel like you've gotten all of that, you'll bring the head back to center, gently release the right hand. Notice what you notice there. You might need to take some shoulder circles. You might need to just gently turn your head a little bit right to left to pay attention to that. And then when you feel complete, you'll make your way onto your back. All right. So today we're really just focusing on being fully present where we are. And so when you find yourself on your back, you might find that you want the body to be long. You might find that you want the knees to be bent, but you're just going to take a moment to really just allow yourself to land. This week was my first week in the office, and it was very interesting to me to notice how the first day in particular, I said this out loud, it was not a good thing. I was like, I want to go home. <laughs> like, it was not a good thing. And the thing that I noticed about that is the more that I said, I want to go home, which in essence is I want to be somewhere other than I am, the harder it made it to actually be where I was. So for the next three to five breaths, I want you to notice the space that you're in. You're all in your homes. So I really want you to notice what that feels like to be in this space. And as you allow yourself to take in the space, you might feel the support that's underneath you. You might get a better sense of the scents that are in the room. So just taking in a deeper breath and noticing the smells in your environment. You might notice if the eyes are open, what things are immediately in your visual field. And then most of you were drinking something right before we started. So what are the tastes that are on your tongue? And then for the next three to five breaths, I want you to just allow yourself 
to repeat to yourself, I am here, right where I need to be. And as you do that, notice if there's any deeper softening in the body, softening in the nervous system. All right, let's start to deepen our breath. So I want you to inhale and inflate the lungs, top of the chest, the collarbones, and exhale, let the navel soften to the floor. And we'll just do three more like that. Big breath, breathing into the collarbones, into the middle ribs, maybe into the lowest ribs and the back body. And then exhale, the abdomen empties out completely. And as you take this last one, you're just allowing yourself to fully breathe into this body, breathe into this moment, breathe into this life that you are living. And exhale, let it go. Start to tone the back of your throat if you haven't already and invite in a gentle ujjayi pranayama. And through the remainder of our practice, our intention is to be here with the breath. Every single shape that we take, every single pose, every single moment, your priority is always to remain with the breath. Everything else is just ancillary and we'll see what happens as we go along. All right, so at the end of your next exhale, if the legs are straight, go ahead and bend the knees. If the knees are bent, draw the soles of the feet to the floor so the feet are hip distance apart. From here, take a big breath in. As you exhale, hug your right knee into your chest. Hold on to the back of the right thigh and you might take a few ankle circles here or not, but you're still continuing to breathe. You're still letting that ujjayi pranayama lead the way. And again, if you've gone one direction with the ankle circles, go ahead and switch directions. Awesome. And when you feel complete, you'll go ahead and come to a neutral spot. Inhale, start to flex your foot and kick your leg up towards the sky, straightening that right leg. And then exhale, bending the knee, drawing the heel towards your pelvis, drawing the thigh towards your chest. And we'll take four more of those. So inhale, kick the leg away from you to straight. And exhale, bend the knee into your chest, draw the heel towards your pelvis. Awesome. And as you take these last three on your own, you're really trying to allow your breath to match the length of the movement, the movement to match the length of the breath. You're noticing if one wants to speed ahead of the other or if both can just sort of fall into a synchronous harmony. Awesome sauce, we have about one more set. And you're again, lightly pulling those hands into the back of the thigh, lightly pressing the thigh into those hands. The next time that right leg is up towards the sky, you'll go ahead and pause there. Flex through the right foot, press the whole heel up, press the ball of the big toe mound up, the pinky toe mound up, and pull all five toes of that right foot down towards your knee, down towards your face. Happy to stay here, or you might slide your left leg long against the floor. And if you choose to do that, again, we're still continuing to breathe. How steady and consistent is the breath? Did the breath become choppy once we started to extend that left leg, or is it still full? Can you roll the inner left thigh to the floor just a tad more, yep, and draw that outer right hip down and away from your head and in towards your inner left thigh, yep, and you just got two more breaths here. Pushing that right thigh into the hands, pulling the hands into the thigh, melting the back of the left thigh into the floor. Awesome. On your next exhale, gently draw that right knee into your chest. You might slightly widen the right leg a smidge to the right and feel how that feels in the hip socket. Again, you're still rooting down through that left leg. Awesome. And then from here, pause, bend the left knee, plant the left foot on the floor, externally rotate the right leg and put the right ankle on top of the left thigh. Flex through that right foot a lot. Open your arms out to the side in a T shape. And I want you to press that right ankle into the top of your left thigh. Start to push the left thigh into the right ankle and then lift your left shin bone parallel-ish to the floor. Perfect. Now from here, you're gonna keep driving that left knee into the right ankle, the right ankle into the left knee. I want you to see how close you can draw your thighs to your chest without letting your tukas come off the floor. And then again, notice what happened to the breath. 
Did your face start to grimace? Are you trying to get somewhere else? Or are you allowing yourself to be here in this experience fully? Some of you will stay right here. Some of you will thread your hands through the whole of your legs, grab the back of the left thigh, front of the left shin, and draw that whole configuration closer to you. Now, again, that right foot is active, right ankle pressing against left thigh. You might rock slowly, gently, right to left. You might stay completely still, but again, you're allowing yourself to pay attention to the breath. How connected to your breath, to this moment are you? Awesome sauce. Those that are in movement, go ahead and come to stillness. Everyone just open your arms out to the right and to the left. Gently lower just the left foot back to the floor. Keep the legs as they are and let that whole configuration fall over to the left. Once the left thigh touches the floor, right sole of the foot touches the floor. Some of you will stay here. Some of you will bring that left hand to the belly of the right thigh. If your leg is too far away, a block might help. And you're gonna lightly push your right knee away from you. So the left hand comes to the medial, the inside edge of your left thigh, and you're gonna push it away from you. So it sounds super odd, but you're pushing the right thigh away from you, pressing down into your right big toe and finding a little stretch there. Some of you will then rotate your gaze over the right hand and just notice if you feel a long stretch going from the right shoulder to the top of the right hip. Awesome sauce. Take one more breath here. As you're ready, you'll inhale and come back through center. You'll gently uncross that right leg Put the foot on the floor. Notice what's happening between the right side and the left side. And then as we're ready, we'll try the other side. Go ahead and exhale and draw that left knee into your chest. Bring your hands to the back of your left thigh. And you've got about three to four breath cycles here, just taking those ankle circles, feeling how your feet are responding, how the body is responding. Noticing if there's any part that you're trying to skip over or rush past. Yep. Nice work, guys. And once you feel complete, you'll go ahead and come to stillness. You'll take a big breath in and a big breath out. Next inhale, start to kick your left leg to straight, reach the foot towards the sky. And then exhale, bend the knee, draw the knee towards the nose, the thigh to the chest, the heel to the hip. And then you'll do about four more of those, inhaling, straightening the leg pressing the thigh into the hands, pulling the hands into the thigh, and then exhaling, hugging that all into your body. And you're just paying attention. How does this feel? I think it becomes really challenging to stay present in the moment to when there's something that we've done before, when it's something that it feels like we should already know how to do this and already move past. That's, I think, the most challenging to really stay present to what's happening in this moment. Awesome, I think this should be our last one. Then you'll go ahead and keep that left leg long and straight. You might start to extend that right leg long beneath you. And we're gonna, again, re-engage that left thigh. So really make sure you're pushing up or reaching up from the left sit bone to the heel. You're pressing the lift, left big toe mound the pinky toe mound up and you're pulling all five toes down towards that left knee yep, and down towards your face. And then everyone, let's see if we can roll that inner right thigh to the floor a smidge more, yep. And then hug your outer left hip away from your left shoulder and head and into the inner right thigh. Great. And then you've got three breaths. And notice if those shoulders are creeping up and away from the floor. Yep. Awesome sauce. All right, the end of your next exhalation, you'll hug that left knee into your chest a little bit more, bending the knee completely. You might open the left knee slightly to the left and you're just paying attention to what's happening on that right thigh. It still roots down. Awesome sauce. Very gently, you'll go ahead and bend the right knee, plant the foot on the floor. Then externally rotate that left thigh even more, cross the left ankle on the top of the left right thigh, flex through the left foot a lot, arms open out into a T-shape. And then when you're ready, you'll lift the right shin bone parallel to the floor. 
Now you're continuing to drive that right knee to your face. You're continuing to press that left ankle against the top of the left thigh. And you'll notice here, are, is your butt tipping more to the left or is it equal between the left and the right? So that might need, mean that you need to actually root down more into your right hip. Some of you will stay right here. Some of you will thread your hands through the whole of your legs and either grab the back of that right thigh, front of your right shin. You might continue to be still or you might move around just gently rocking right to left. That right ankle stays, sorry, left ankle stays super active, pressing against that right knee. Yeah, awesome sauce. If you're in movement, come to stillness. Everyone unwind the arms, open them out to the right and to the left. Lower that right foot back to the floor. And then you'll let that whole configuration fall over to your right. Again, the left sole of the foot firmly planted on the floor. You might stay here. You might bring your right hand to the inside edge of your left thigh and push your left thigh away from you. Keep pressing into the left big toe and then you might look over that left hand and you're just breathing and you're noticing what you notice. And you've got about two more breath cycles here. Where is there tension in the body? Where is this anticipation that might be trying to have you hurry up? How does that show up in the breath? For me, it shows up as a hurried inhalation. Um, it also shows up as an incomplete exhalation. And you just notice what's happening for you. As you're ready, you'll gently inhale and come back through center. Once you're back to center, uncross the left ankle from the right, widen your feet a little bit wider than your hips, let the arms open out in a giant T shape. And you'll take a big breath in here. And then as you exhale, allow the legs to fall over to your left. And then you'll inhale and come back up. And then you'll go over to the right. And you'll just take about four sets of these on your own. And you're just paying attention to the internal and external rotation of the hips. You're noticing if the thighs move independently or if they move in one piece. And if you can, allow them to move a little bit more independently so that the two innominate bones of your pelvis allow themselves to actually function as they can. And then the next time your legs fall over to your left side. So after you've done four sets each side, You'll allow your legs to just fall over to the left and you'll pause there. Some of you will stay there. Some of you will cross the left ankle on top of the right thigh. Some of you will slide that left ankle down towards your right ankle. Some of you will stay right here. Some of you will start to reach your arms out to the side and up and over your head. Some of you will grab that right uh, wrist and inchworm your hands over to the left. But you're just gonna pause and you're gonna breathe. Nice job, guys. If you're holding the hands, see if you can soften the face. At the end of your next exhalation, gently release the hands if you've got them. Allow the arms to inhale and sweep wide. Gently uncross the left ankle. Take a big breath in and come back up through center. And then exhale, allow the legs to fall to the right. Inhale back through center and exhale, allow the legs to fall to the left. Just a little palate reset. Inhale through center and then exhale, allow the legs to fall to the right. And then you'll take that on the other side. You might choose to stay exactly here. That right ankle might come to the top of the left thigh, left knee. You might slide that right ankle all the way down to your left ankle. You might sweep the arms up and overhead and maybe grab that left wrist and inchworm the arms up and to the right. But you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what's happening in this moment. I can't speak for any of you, but I do think that the rush, the impetus to be somewhere else is like based on this idea that where I am is not sufficient. And so we're just allowing ourselves to remember that wherever we are, however we are, that's a-okay. On your next in-breath, those that are holding the hand, gently release. 
allow the arms to open back out towards the right and to the left. Gently uncross that right ankle and inhale, come back through center. As you exhale, gently release the foot. Make sure the feet are hip distance apart and just take a few little pelvic rots here, inhaling and exhaling, rolling and arching the spine just a smidge. Okay. Awesome. Once you're ready, go ahead and find a neutral pelvis. Bring your hands alongside your hips. Great. Inhale, make sure your feet are hip distance apart. Inhale, sweep your arms up and over your head, letting them go as far above you as they can. Okay, and then exhale, come back down. We're gonna repeat this. As you inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips, lift the arms up and overhead. As you exhale, keep your hands there, but roll the spine down, bone by bone by bone by bone by bone by bone. When you need to, you'll inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips. And then you'll exhale, lower the hands and the hips back to that starting point. <clears throat> that counts as one set. We're gonna do three more of these. So inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips, lift the arms straight up through center and over your head. As you exhale, keep the hands there, reach out through the fingertips and slowly articulate the spine back down to the floor. When the pelvis hits, inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips. And as you exhale, slowly bring the hands and the hips back down to the starting point. That counts as two sets. You've got two more on your own and you're just paying attention to how this works. Can you really notice how the body wants to work? Are you paying attention to skipping any parts of the vertebral extension? the vertebral flexion. Yep. Are you paying attention to how the feet are pressing into the floor, how the breath is moving through the body? Yep, and this should be our last set. Nice job, guys. After your fourth and final set, you're gonna just take a moment to pause with the hands alongside the hips, pelvis on the floor. Everyone, once you're there, allow your palms to face up to the sky. And if you're still working, you just wait, we'll wait, awesome. From here, let's press down into the big toes, the pinky toes. Press the backs of the shoulders into the floor. Press the head into the floor. Inhale, push the feet down to lift the hips up. Once your hips are at the height that feels okay for you, you might walk your arm bones a little closer towards each other. Some of you might just continue to press the backs of the hands, backs of the arms into the floor. Some of you might grab the outer edges of the mat. Some of you might interlace the hands underneath you, but you've got four breath cycles here. And wherever you are, I want you to really focus on the breath. Really focus on feeling it come into your body, noticing where it goes. Really focus on observing the breath leave the body. Where does it empty from first? And as you continue to pay attention to breath, can you hear it? Is it a smooth, continuous sound? Or is it jumpy in any way? Is it rushing to be somewhere other than it is? At the end of your next exhalation, if the hands are interlaced, you'll gently unwind the hands, you'll unwind the shoulders, and you'll bring your pelvis back down to the floor. You'll take a moment to just let the spine settle, let the body settle, let you be still and breathe. And just notice, how's the body, how's the breath? Okay, all right, on your next in-breath, we're gonna go ahead and find length through the spine. As you exhale, draw your knees into your chest, give yourself a happy hug. Some of you might rock a little right to left, some of you might not. Once you feel like you've gotten your low back pretty lengthened, we're gonna go ahead and come to a still neutral spot. Reach your arms up to the sky like happy little zombies. Palms face in, there you go. Fingers are together. Great, lift your shin bones parallel to the floor. 
draw your thigh bones away from you so they're perpendicular to the floor. And then everybody, I want you to see if you can draw your front ribs towards your pelvis a smidge, but keep your butt really rooted. Now, inhale, I want you to reach just your right foot forward to about a 45 degree angle, right foot forward, 45 degree angle, straightening it super strong. Awesome, as you exhale, hug the right knee back to meet the left. Awesome. Inhale, send the left leg forward, 45 degree angle. Yep, exhale, hug it back. We're gonna do that two more times. Inhale, send the right leg forward, 45 degree angle. Yep, exhale, hug it back. And then inhale, send the left leg forward, 45 degree angle. And exhale, hug it back. Awesome, so for these last two, you might try to send the right leg forward and then the left arm over your head as far as it'll go. And then you'll exhale, hug the, everything back to that midline. And then you'll do the other side, inhaling, sending the left leg forward, right arm up and overhead, and exhale back. Awesome sauce. Inhale, send that right leg forward, left arm overhead. Front ribs stay in, exhale, hug it back. And then inhale, send that left leg forward, right arm up and overhead. Awesome sauce, and exhale, hug it in. Great, hug everything into your body. We're gonna do one more set of those, but we're gonna hold it in the position. And before we do the next set, you can repeat that just as we did with the 45 degree angle. Please note that the lower you lower the leg, of course, the more challenging it becomes. That being said, we wanna make sure we're still keeping our ribs in. So when you're ready, let's go ahead and try that again. Come to dead bug positions, arms parallel to each other, perpendicular to the floor, shins parallel to each other. Inhale, go ahead and send your right leg forward, your left arm up and overhead. We're gonna pause here for three breaths. Hug those front ribs towards the top of your hip bones. Draw the low belly in, lengthen your tailbone down and keep reaching up through that right arm and your left shin. So even though the right shin is coming down and left arm's going up and overhead, the opposite limbs are still active. Awesome, next exhale, come back to dead bug position. And then we'll try that on the other side. Inhale, send the left leg forward, the right arm up and overhead. Keep reaching up through the left fingertips. Keep reaching up through the right shin bone as you push out. There you go. And you got two more breath cycles, front ribs hugging in. Notice if you're grimacing your face. Next exhale, hug everything in. Last time, last set. So inhale, right leg goes forward, left arm up and overhead. And you breathe for three breaths. Make sure that right arm is super active. There you go. Next exhale, hug it all in. Last time, last side. Inhale, send the left leg forward, right arm alongside your ears. The right shin stays parallel-ish to the floor. There we go. And exhale, hug it in. Hug both knees into your chest. You might rock a little bit right to left. Erica, you've missed core work, so we had to do it just for you. <laughs> And then some of you will come to stillness, draw the soles of your feet together, grab the outside edges of your feet and widen your knees super wide and apart for a variation of Supta Baddha Konasana, keeping your butt super weighted, the knees super wide. Some of you will stay here and just try to draw those heels towards your belly. Some of you will open the feet towards the sky and allow the knees to knock out outside of the torso for happy baby, but you pay attention to what feels good to you. Awesome sauce. And then at the end of your next exhale, you'll hug the knees together. You'll reach the legs long, you'll reach the arms up and over your head and you'll yawn and wiggle and stretch in whatever way feels good to you. Awesome sauce. And then gently you'll make your way on to your abdomen. So some of you might need to actually flip around. So your head faces the other direction. Some of you will be fine as you are. And the first thing that we're going to do again, just because we haven't done this in a while, is when you find yourself on your abdomen, we're going to either open the arms out in a T-shape or you're going to cactus your elbows. Yep. And then let's all go ahead and look at our left hand, left elbow first. Walk the left hand, left elbow a little bit to the left. And then from there, 
keeping the elbow still on the floor. Turn your head back to the right. Step your right hand underneath your right shoulder. Come to the tips of your right fingertips. Awesome. Now, when you're there, you're going to slight push into that right hand and start to slightly roll over to the left. If you had already walked your left elbow to the left, there should be room here. And now if the elbow is bent, I want you to push down into the left elbow. I want you to play with where your head is and press with that right hand. Some of you were looking for a stretch that comes across the top of our left chest and we're being very mindful. Some of you might stack that right hip on top of the left. Some of you might not turn that much, but you're just paying attention to what you're noticing in the left side of the body. Notice what happens if you lift your left ear away from the floor, or let the left head drop towards the floor. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. And then on your next in breath, you'll gently come back onto the abdomen. Still look at that right hand plant the right forearm back to the floor and then slide the right elbow to the right and then go ahead and look to the left. Step the left hand underneath the left shoulder, come to the tips of the fingertips. And as you're ready, you'll lightly push down into that left hand in order to start to roll to the right. And again, if your arm is cactus, you're really pushing down into the right palm, right elbow, hugging your right elbow to your left, sorry, your right nipple. And then you notice what happens if you lift and lower your head away from the floor. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what you notice. Nice job. On your next in breath, you'll gently come back through center. From here, let's all come to the tips of our fingers like cousin finger, cousin it. Make sure your thumbs are roughly in line with the tops of your nipples and let your forehead rest to the floor. So widen your arms, Jason. So they're in line, but they're not close to you. So they're probably like a wide spidery lady thing. So they are probably off the mat. There we go. Make sure the tops of your feet are on the floor. Press down into the big toenails, the, the pinky toenails. Lengthen your tailbone back and make sure your legs are straight. Now, as weird as this sounds, I want you to keep looking at your belly button and you'll inhale and roll up to a cobra. Keep looking at your belly button. Keep looking at your belly button. Once you're at the highest that you feel like you can do, draw the shoulder blades onto the back. Lift the sternum, start to lift the gaze and look forward. Keep the legs active and then you're gonna exhale and lower all the way back down. Awesome, and we're gonna repeat that a few times. So you continue to look at your belly button, keep your legs active, inhale, roll up as high as you want. Once you're as high as you think that you can be, draw the shoulder blades onto the back, reach the heart and sternum forward, reach the head forward, keep the legs active, and then exhale, slowly lower down. Awesome, you got two more like that just on your own. I encourage you to continue to play with the breath and really focus on moving sequentially through the body. Noticing the shoulder blades coming onto the back opens the heart space, thrusts it forward and allows you to come up. Yeah, guys, and then exhale, lower down. Maybe I should say people, that's more gender inclusive. And then you'll come all the way up the fourth and final time. You might choose to hang out there a little bit. You might look around right to left. You might adjust in any way, but you're just paying attention to being here, to being now. And then when you feel complete, you'll come to stillness and lower all the way back down and you'll just take three breaths. For some of us, that might've been a pretty big back bend. For some of us, it might've been a pretty big back bend, even if it didn't seem like it was, but it was all a pretty big back bend. And you're just gonna pause and you're gonna breathe. And then we've got two more things that we're gonna do. So let's bring our hands alongside our hips. Turn your palms to face the floor. Widen your hands just a smidge away from your hips. Keep the arms straight. Extend through the legs and keep them super active. And then let's go ahead and draw the shoulder blades up towards the ears and onto your back body. Notice now that you can lift the elbows up just a smidge and you can lift your head up just a smidge, but keep the neck long. Awesome sauce. And I want you to press down into the tops of your feet and lengthen your tailbone back and draw the low belly in. Awesome sauce. This is gonna sound weird. Bend just your right knee, grab your right heel with your right hand. Keep everything else exactly the same. Everything else exactly the same. 
Awesome. Now we wanna see if we can find a stretch across the top of our right quad. So you can pull that right heel in. You can kick that right foot away, but you're still pressing into the top of the left foot. So that foot's still active. Left shoulder blade still hugging onto the back, heart still lifting. Awesome. When you're ready, you'll gently release just the right leg, coming back to that Shalabhasana just in the upper body. And then as you're ready, you'll bend the left knee, hug the left heel towards the hip. Tailbone continues to reach long. Right foot still super active. Chest just hovering off the floor, shoulder blade squeezing on the back. Yeah. As you're ready, you'll gently release that left leg. Awesome. Keep the upper body hovering like this. Everyone draw your front ribs close, lengthen your tailbone back. And now you might reach the legs so far back that they hover up and away from the floor. Some of you might choose to stay here. Some of you might squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back a bit more, bending the elbows. Some of you might reach the hands back and let them hover off the floor. Some of you might clasp the hands behind the back but you're gonna pause and you're gonna breathe and you're gonna notice where you are right here, right now. Awesome sauce. Listen very closely, keep the torso as it is, release the hands. Bring the hands underneath your shoulders. I want you to slowly push back into a cobra. So the pelvis is gonna stay on the floor. The legs are gonna come onto the floor. The heart is gonna reach forward. The arms are gonna be super active. Now listen very closely. You're going to lift into an upward facing dog. So the legs straighten, the tops of the feet press into the floor, the arms straighten. You pause and you breathe. Yeah, happy day guys. Awesome sauce. Very gently, lower all the way back down. Take a moment to pause, take a moment to breathe. It's very ironic, but being where we are really does require this much of an open heart because it requires that we let go of all the other ideas that we had about where we thought we would be, should be, could be, and just be where we are. And sometimes that's not always the best thing to do, or at least the easiest thing to do. All right, let's go ahead and gently find ourselves up to a hands and knees position. And then from hands and knees, we're gonna find ourselves into our downward facing dog. And this is just a momentary reprieve just to straighten out the back, lengthen out the back from all those back bends. So your knees can be as bent as they want to be. You can fidget around in any way that you want to be, but we're just trying to find elongation through the spine. And you're just gonna be here for three breaths before we do some stuff with our feet. Awesome sauce. At the end of your next exhale, go ahead and lower the knees down to the mat. You'll inhale, find a happy cow pose. And you'll exhale, find a happy cat pose. And you've just got three to five of these, allowing yourself to move with the movement of your breath. Nice work, guys. At the end of your next exhalation, you might take any organic movement that feels good to you. You might also find that you need to rest for a bit in child's pose, but you're allowing yourself to be where you are, as you are. Nice work. You have about two more breath cycles doing whatever the heck you happen to be doing. Last breath cycle here. Awesome. And then we're gonna find ourselves into toe squat. So Sandy, today, just in honor of you, we are gonna do navicular stretch too, but we're gonna start with toe squat before we do that. So when you come up, I want you to make sure the pinky toe is tucked under, and then you're gonna do whatever the heck you want with your arms for today. So some of you might interlace the hands at the low back. Some of you might take um, Garudasana arms. Some of you might take, sorry, Garudasana arms. Some of you might take Gomukhasana arms. You're just going to pause and you're going to breathe and you're going to allow yourself to be wherever you happen to be. And you've got four breath cycles on one side. And so after you've taken four breath cycles doing one arm, you're going to switch and do four breath cycles doing the other arm. And wherever you are, notice if your rib cage is splayed. So let's see if we can still hone those ribs in. 
Awesome. We've got about one more breath cycle here. And then at the end of your next exhalation, we're just gonna come forward out of toe squat. We're not gonna do the pitter patter just yet. And with hands underneath our shoulders, widen your knees slightly wider than your hips. Take your right foot over towards your left foot. Bring the top of your left foot into the sole of your right foot. Start to push your pelvis back towards your heels. Your blocks are helpful if you need them. You can put them underneath your hands. And then you might stay there completely still. You might lift your left knee up. You might push your left foot down and start to drag your left foot to the left. And you're just paying attention to how this feels on the sole of the right foot. Awesome sauce. Once you've gotten enough of that, you'll come forward, hands and knees, and then you'll try that on the other side. So knees wider than the hips, left foot comes to the right foot, top of right foot into sole of left foot. Push your pelvis back towards your heels. And then you might lift the right leg up and stay there or push the right foot down and drag it to the right. And you're just paying attention. How are you breathing? How are you being? Okay. As you're ready, then gently release that. You'll come back forward, hands and knees, and you'll do toe squat once again. As you come back into toe squat the second time, I want you to sit as tall as you can through the vertebra. I want you to see if you can soften your front ribs down towards your pelvis and slightly back towards your belly. And then I want you to see if you can draw the shoulder blades down the back and then notice that they can actually push the heart forward. And then just as we started with at the very beginning, imagine that somebody's got their hands at the back of your occipital ridge, draw that back end up so that you can find the length through the spine. And you're just gonna breathe here. We did all this stuff to set up the spine for alignment, and now can you just breathe? I think there's a real requirement or trust of faith that wherever we are is always in alignment, that it's always on course for us. And I guess we just have to kind of trust that and let go and see how that goes. We've got one to two more breath cycles here. And then as you're ready at the end of that second exhalation, you'll gently come forward, hands and knees. You'll pitter patter the tops of the feet on the floor and then you'll take that counter stretch if you'd like. Yeah, yesterday though at work, I thought it was funny. They brought in a fortune teller. <laughs> His name was Zoltar. I thought that was the most fantastic thing. Of <laughs> I asked him to tell me, he asked, uh, what we wanted to know. And I told him, I was like, I want to know what the next piece of good news I'm going to get. And he did this whole like modern dance interpretive thing. And he said, I have to consult my third eye. And I thought it was freaking hilarious. I just was enamored with this man. And then he told me, he's like, your next piece of good news will come in the form of an avocado. And I was like, all right. And he's like, avocados are ugly and crusty and black on the outside, but then you cut into them and they're soft and nutritious and dense on the inside. And I was just like, wow, you just pulled that out of thin air, but I'm actually going to go with this. I'm actually going to go with this. Sorry, sidetrack. We're going to make our way to down dog. I just, I think so much of our life is kind of like this avocado analogy. We don't always know what it is until we dig into it and eat it. And, you know, if we're trying to rush ahead, you know, it's not going to happen, but that's a side note. Let's go to down dog. <laughs> now for down dog for today, I want you to bend your knees. And with your knees bent, I want you to take your right foot, specifically your big toe and your second toe. So like you're a little turtle and you're gonna bring your right foot to the heel of your left foot. Bring your right foot to the heel of your left foot. Yeah. And now I want you to really claw your toes around your left ankle. And you're going to pull your left ankle down, push your hands down and forward, lift your hips up. And notice what's happening there at the back of your right calf. Awesome sauce. On your next in breath, you're just going to sweep that right leg up towards the sky. Keep reaching, reaching the left heel down and notice what that does at the back of the leg. Yep. And then exhale and draw your right knee to your nose. Awesome. Very gently lower that right foot to the floor. Great. 
So with the right foot to the floor, you'll step the back foot down to the floor. So preparing for warrior one with that left foot. There we go, Sandy. And then as you're ready, draw the right hip back and slowly come all the way up to warrior one. We're just gonna pause and you're gonna breathe. And you're gonna pause and you're gonna breathe and you're gonna see how this feels. So this is our first four year one and you're just seeing how this feels in the body. Can you be right here right now? What adjustments need to be made? At the end of your next exhale, the hands come to frame the front foot. Go ahead and step back to a downward facing dog and pause. Okay, from there, inhale, come forward into plank. We're just gonna hold our plank for a breath or two. And then at the end of your second exhalation, you can choose to do a happy push up and go back to downward facing dog. You might choose to come through an up dog or cobra. You choose whatever works best for you. And you'll meet back in downward facing dog. And you'll just take a moment to breathe here. Notice what's happening on the right side and notice what's happening on the left side. And then this time, I want you to bend both your knees again. This time, straighten just your right leg and shift your butt to the right just a smidge. Notice how this is a slightly different sensation. And then go ahead and come back through center with the pelvis, bend both the knees, and then straighten just your left leg. Shift your pelvis over to the left. Notice this, this sensation. Awesome. Then you'll inhale, come back through center, bend both knees. Take your left toes and hook them around the back of the right ankle heel thing. And then you'll start to pull your left toes down, reach your right heel down and push the hands down. Nice job, guys. Next in breath, sweep that left leg up and behind you. Awesome. And then as you exhale, knee to nose. Carefully plant that left foot between your hands. Spin the right foot to the floor and step it slightly wide and forward. And then as you're ready, draw the left hip back and inhale, come all the way up for a warrior one. And then you just take a moment to pause and you take a moment to breathe. And you notice what you notice here. How is this side? How is this moment? How is this breath? Yep, and any adjustments that you need to make with the arms is A-OK. -okay. On your next exhale, hands frame the front foot. Step back to downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank. Three breath cycles this time. And as you're here, you just pause and you breathe and you notice, is there any impatience? Is the ability, do you have the ability right now to choose to be with you fully, completely, no matter what your experience is? At the end of your third exhalation, you might shift forward and do a push up. You might come through up dog cobra. You might just go back to down dog. Yep, and you just pause and you breathe and you notice what you notice. Great. The end of your next exhalation, I want you to take a big breath in and lower your knees to the mat. And then let's press back to child's pose for just a moment before we do this next thing. And you just pause and you breathe and you feel how the body's working. You feel how the breath is working. You feel how the mind is working. And then you, you see if you can get below that and see how the heart, the spirit, the essence of you is working. There are a lot of these spiritual teachers that talk a lot about us being able to get into contact with that quiet voice because it'll never lead us wrong. And I think that quiet voice leads us into some of the experiences that we have. All right, let's go ahead and come forward, hands and knees. Now, this is just gonna be weird. So we're just gonna play with this. I want you to come to hands and knees and we're gonna send our left foot back. Just have the tips of the toes on the floor and push down through both hands. Hug front two hip bones together and lengthen your tailbone back. On your next in-breath, I want you to float your left leg up and parallel to the floor. Great. Now push down into your right hand and sweep you sorry, your left hand and sweep your right hand back so it's parallel 
to your left leg. So it's back behind you, back behind you. Awesome sauce. Now, as you inhale, sweep that right arm to the right and then over and in front of your head. And then as you exhale, sweep that right hand back to the right and back alongside your right hip. And you've got four of these. And you're just noticing that there are more wobbles that come with this. So you have to press down through your left hand a lot. You might need to move a lot slower than you're accustomed to. And you'll have to continue to press down into the top of that right shin as you hug that outer right hip back as you move forward and back. And you're just noticing what you notice. How's the breath? How's the body? How do we work when things are not exactly as we're accustomed to? Awesome sauce. After you've done four, you're gently gonna lower the right hand, lower the left knee. And then we'll try that all on the other side. So this time the right leg will shoot back. You'll tuck the toes under, you'll straighten the leg along. Hug those front two hip bones together, lift through that inner right thigh. And then you'll lift the right leg parallel to the floor. From there, push down into your right hand a lot and sweep your left hand back so it's alongside your hip. Then as you inhale, the left arm goes to the left and it comes forward in front of you. And as you exhale, it sweeps back and retraces its direction. Now as you do this, notice if you're dumping in that right hand and see if you can still keep pushing down into the right hand to lift the right armpit up. Yeah. See if that right leg can stay super straight and it's like the inner right thigh is lifting a little bit more. Yep, and then Jason, pull your outer left hip back. It's coming forward just a smidge. There you go, we stay square. Mm -hmm. Awesome, and you're just gonna do four sets. Nice job guys. And after you've done four sets, you'll lower the left hand, you'll lower the right knee and you'll go back to a downward facing dog and you'll just notice what this feels like. Nice work guys. All right, one more weird thing. Let's go ahead and inhale, come forward into plank and you're just gonna hold here for a moment to stabilize the spine. And then as you exhale, you'll gently lower the knees down to the mat. Now I would encourage you to pad your knees with a blanket, but you choose to do whatever the heck is gonna work for you. Okay. And once you've padded your knees, you'll curl both sets of toes under and walk your toes towards the right. That right, yep. And then walk your right hand forward and to the right just a smidge. Now start to roll to the right, bend your left knee, draw your left heel to your pelvis, grab the top of your left ankle with your left hand and open your left thigh parallel to the floor. Now before you go anywhere, the heel and the hip are coming really close together on the left side. Everyone push down onto your right hand a lot and lift that inner left thigh parallel to the floor. Now, just like we did on our bellies, I want you to keep your tailbone as long as it can be. And some of you will stay right here. Some of you will start to kick your left leg away from you and you'll find this crazy stretch coming on the top of your right arm. And you're just gonna pause and you're gonna breathe and you're gonna notice what you notice. Awesome. Very gently draw the heel closer to your pelvis, extend the left leg parallel to the floor. Great, and see if you can turn the heel up just a smidge so the toes point down and they remain parallel. There we go. Go ahead and lower the left foot to the floor. You might need to spin your right heel back behind you even more. Depends on how it feels in your knee, so you pay attention to that. And then you'll sweep your left arm alongside your ears and you'll take this variation of gate pose. And I want you to pay attention. So at the beginning of the practice, we started holding on to the back of our occipital ridge. You might choose to bring your hand to the back of your head and pull your hand into your head, your head into your hand. You might choose to continue to push down through that right hand and move or lean your chest back, lean back, but you're paying attention to what's happening right now in this moment. Awesome sauce. 
And then very gently, you'll release. You'll come back through hands and knees. You'll make your way back to downward facing dog and you'll just pause and you'll see what you notice between the sides. Us allowing ourselves to be here and now allows us to course correct when we need to. But if we're constantly imagining that we're somewhere else, wishing we were somewhere else, we're not able to respond as effectively or as efficiently as we might otherwise. All right, let's go ahead and inhale and come forward, hands and knees. Make sure both toes stay tucked under. Walk your feet to the left. Walk your left hand forward and slightly to the left, or rather slightly forward and to the left. And then you're gonna to start to stack your right shoulder on top of the left, the right hip on top of the left. Grab your right ankle with your right hand. Draw that heel close to your pelvis and lift that right thigh parallel to the floor. Great. Now, as you continue to push down into the left hand and you draw the shoulder blades onto the back body, your tailbone lengthens down. Some of you might start to kick that right leg back behind you. Some of you might look up or you might look down. So you're paying attention how the breath is working. You're noticing if you find a nice stretch across the top of the right upper chest area, just by kicking the right leg back. And then very gently, you'll release the right ankle. You'll extend the right leg parallel-ish to the floor. Parallel-ish to the floor. There we go. Lift <laughs> the outer right heel. And then very gently lower the whole sole of the right foot to the floor. You might need to adjust the left heel back behind you if it hurts your knee or bothers your knee in any way, turn that foot back behind you even more. And then you might reach the right arm alongside your ear. You might grab the back of your head with your right hand. You might lean back and look back. You might look down, but you're paying attention to where you feel a nice stretch happening along the right side. So that's the top side body in this instance. Awesome sauce. And then very gently, you'll roll your chest to the floor. You'll release the shape. You'll go back to downward dog for the one more time. And you pause and you breathe. Great. See if we can add a few of these things together now. Inhale, sweep your left, sorry, your right leg up and back. As you exhale, knee to nose, pause, round through the spine a lot. Quietly step that right foot between your hands. Step the left foot slightly to the left and forward and spin the foot down. And then squeezing the legs together, come all the way up to vertical for Virabhadrasana one. Now we've already been here, but notice what it is like in this moment. Are you able to push down into the left pinky toe even more? Are you able to push down into the whole sole of the right foot even more? Are you able to hug those legs in towards each other? And then for today, let's open our arms out to the side and bring our hands to our low back and interlace the fingers. Now I want you to notice if you need to have the heels of the hands away from each other, or if you can draw the heels of the hands towards each other. So sorry, hands are behind our back, Sandy. And then see if you can reach that one fist down and back towards that left foot. And notice how that gives you the ability to root down more into the left foot. And as you do that, keep rooting into the right foot. Some of you will stay right here, lift your inner armpits up and draw your shoulder blades back. Some of you will start to bring your forehead maybe to the inside edge of that right knee, maybe to the inside edge of that right ankle but you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what's happening. And if you chose to fold in for that humbled warrior, are your hands still near your pelvis or are they reaching up to the sky? Are you paying attention to how the shoulder blades are hugging onto your back regardless of what the shape looks like? Great. Those that you have folded in, keep hugging that outer right hip back. And then on your next in breath, everybody push down through your feet and slowly return to Virabhadrasana one, arms alongside the ears. Yep, nice job. Next exhale, frame the front foot. Go ahead and step back, downward facing dog. Cycle through or not, your choice, but you're gonna just take a moment to pause and breathe. You take a moment to pause and breathe. Where are you rushing through your life and in what ways can you allow yourself to stop saying, I don't wanna be here, I wanna go back. 
and what changes for you when you do. I mean, I do think Zoltar made it up on the spot, but I do think it was quite profound of him to say that so many aspects of news that we receive are like that avocado. And I personally really like avocado, so I thought it was a good analogy. All right, let's try the other side. Let's go ahead and inhale and lift your left leg up and back. As you exhale, hug the knee to the nose and just take a moment to pause there. Gently lower the left foot to the floor. Walk the right foot slightly to the right and forward and root your feet for warrior one. And then when you're ready, you'll inhale and come all the way up for Virabhadrasana one. Now, this is technically our fourth warrior one of the practice, but this is your second one on the left side. And, but it's its own unique thing. So how is it working for you right now? How's the breath? How's the body? How's the mind? On your next in-breath, the arms open out and they come to the low back. And you'll take the awkward opposite interlace behind you. You'll draw the shoulders up towards the ears, the shoulder blades onto the back body. And then notice if the hands are apart or if you can really draw the heels of the hands together. And some of you will choose to stay here and really root that one hand back to the right foot. Some of you will start to fold in, drawing your forehead inside the left thigh, left knee, maybe left ankle. If you have folded in, notice if the hands stay close to the pelvis or they reach up to the sky. All of us notice that the shoulder blades can continue to hug on to the back as the side body stays long. The left outer hip draws back and in. Great. Those that are folded in, you'll gently inhale and come all the way back up. Releasing everyone, arms alongside your ears for Virabhadrasana one. And then as you're ready, you'll exhale and frame the front foot. Step yourselves back to downward facing dog. Last, last option to cycle through or not. Nice work, guys. And then gently, we'll find ourselves back into child's pose, back into balasana. This time, you might want to walk your forearms forward, allow the elbows to come onto the floor, draw the palms to touch, and let the elbows come, or rather, the fingers to come to touch the nape of the neck. You might just swim the arms back behind you if that feels better, but you're gonna just take three breaths. And just as we started, I want you to see if you can breathe wide into your upper ribs. And if you can exhale from the navel to the spine. Awesome sauce. As you're ready, you'll gently release the hands alongside the knees. Push down into the floor and roll the spine up to vertical. Bring your bum to the floor and extend your legs in front of you. Now with your legs in front of you, let's go ahead and take a moment first to bend both knees and plant the soles of the feet on the floor. Some of you might actually want to sit up on a blanket. Let's have you guys sit up on a blanket. Great. Now with the soles of the feet on the floor, so bending your knees, I want you to tuck your right foot underneath you so you can bring, not as clear as mud. So tuck your right foot underneath you so it'll come over towards the left side of your hip and then you'll cross your left foot outside of your right thigh. And the first thing that you'll do is see if you need to lift your pelvis up and slide your butt a little bit more to the right so both sit bones feel equal. And then you'll pull that left thigh into your chest and then you'll start to maybe rotate just gently towards the left. But the thigh is coming to the chest. You might push the hands into the thigh, the thigh into the hand. Some of you might bring that right arm outside of the left knee. You might bring the whole el left elbow um, and then 
the left hand behind you, but you'll just take a moment to pause and you'll breathe and you'll notice what you notice. Great. And I want you to see where you can soften around your shoulders, particularly that right shoulder. See if you can continue to root into your left hip. Awesome. Very gently, you'll unwind. You'll come back through center. You'll uncross your left leg. You'll unwind the right leg. And then we'll go ahead and try this on the other side. So we'll slide the left shin bone under, the right shin bone outside of the left thigh. You might need to lift your pelvis up and scoot it a little bit to the left so both sit bones remain even. And then you can just start by pulling that right shin towards your chest, lifting up through the spine. You might then start to rotate a bit towards the right. The right hand might come back behind you and you're taking whatever variation feels good with that left arm. So you might do the elbow, you might just hug the knee in, you might straighten the leg long. I mean, it really just depends on how your body's feeling. For me, I just like hugging my leg, it feels very comforting. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. And then see if you can soften your shoulders. So sometimes we hike up through the shoulders to try to get more of a twist and see if you can let that go just a bit. Yeah, great. And your next in breath, you will gently unwind. You'll come back through center. And then you're gonna draw the soles of your feet together, lift the knees open wide like a book. And you might need to shimmy your hips around a little bit so it feels like your sit bones are equal. Great. Pull your heart and sternum forward and then start to hinge at your hips. And you're just coming as far forward as you can, keeping your spine as long as you can. And you might then lightly press your elbows into your thighs. You might then find that you actually want to start to round the spine. So then you can start to round the spine just a little bit. Awesome. And then we're gently going to come out of that. And we're taking our last shape, which is where we'll be for just a bit of time. Okay, so hug your knees back towards each other. Stay sitting on your blanket and you might widen your feet so they're hip distance apart. From here, you're just gonna let your chest fall on your thighs. You're gonna let your head fall through the whole of your legs. Some of you will bring your hands underneath you and you'll grab opposite top of ankle. So hands come underneath me up. And some of you will stay right here. And this is a really fun shape. Karina Benner teaches us a lot in her yin classes where it just gives you a different set of sensations happening in the upper back. Some of you had mentioned that there was tightness and stiffness in the upper back and you might just choose to stay here and just breathe. Some of you, if you're holding onto the ankles, will release the ankles and you'll just slowly start to straighten your legs. But I want you to go to where you actually feel curious about the sensations that you're experiencing. For me, just folding forward like this feels pretty interesting to me. Sometimes it feels pretty interesting to straighten the legs and have the back of the hamstring stretch, but you're just paying attention to what feels interesting to you. And you're allowing yourself to breathe. You know, because I, I think that there can be a tendency to want to pick the next best thing or ultimately it will lead us where we want to go. But, you know, some of those things we can't know. Some of those things we can only discover by really being curious and present and alert with what's happening right here and now instead of wishing that we were somewhere else or something else was different. And so you're just going to allow yourself to be curious and in the shape and continuing to breathe. And you've got about, I don't know, four or five more breath cycles. And so you'll just breathe last four breath cycles. And after you've completed your fourth exhalation, you will gently and slowly come out of whatever shape you happen to find yourself in. From there, 
You might extend the legs long and just sit tall for a moment in Dandasana. Eyes closed or gazed inward. And then you'll gently start to make your way onto your backs. We are winding down, so if you do want to cover your bodies, by all means, start doing that. And then once you find yourself onto your back, the first thing that I would encourage you to do is just take a moment to be still. Notice how the right side feels compared to the left side, the shoulders feel compared to the hips, the ankles. And then want you to check in and see if there's any final shape or shapes that would feel super freaking fantastic to you. And then you'll go ahead and explore that. So it might be a twist. Some of you might be happy as a clam to go straight to Shavasana. Some of you might want to do a figure four or happy baby, but you just allow yourself to be in this moment, exploring movement in your body or stillness in your body as is curious to you. And you've got at least another minute and a half to do whatever you are doing or not doing. So by all means, please take advantage of that. And then as you feel complete, you'll make your way into your final resting pose. And I do encourage you to take your time to set yourself up well. So if your space is cold, maybe cover the body. If the body feels like you would like some support, by all means, use that. And then once you feel established in whatever shape you might have found yourself in, I want you to just pay attention to the, how the breath is feeling in the body now. And then we'll start to intentionally deepen the breath before we let it go. So I want you to take a slow, steady, smooth, deep breath in. And then a slow, steady, smooth, deep breath out. And you'll just do two more like that. Slow, steady, deep breath in, followed by a slow, steady, deep breath out. And then at the top of your next inhalation, when you've taken that slow, steady, deep breath in, just hold the breath at the top for a count or two, as long as it's comfortable. And then you'll slowly let everything exhale and empty out. And then you'll do that two more times. So slow, steady, deep breath in, maybe holding the breath at the top, for a beat or two, and then a slow, steady, deep breath out. And then as we're moving into this last set, we'll do the same thing. You'll take that slow, steady, deep breath in. At the top, you'll hold the breath for a beat or two. And then see if you can sip in just a little bit more air, just so it's still comfortable. And then a slow, steady, deep breath out. And you'll just repeat that same process two more times. 
So a slow, steady, deep breath in. Top of the inhalation, hold the breath for a couple counts. Sip in a bit more air. And then allow your body to softly, gently release it all. After you've completed your next exhalation, you'll just allow the breath to return to its involuntary rhythm. And for the next few moments or so, I do encourage you to just allow yourself to be present and alert and perhaps curious and in love with whatever you notice happening physically in the form whatever you notice in terms of sensations or feelings or experiences. So just allow yourself to be curious and attentive, receptive to the messages that might be contained within. For who knows, it might be like that avocado, perhaps not so appealing on the outside, but maybe rich with nutrients, and sustenance on the inside. And I'll let you know when it's time to come out. Gently allow your awareness to return to your breath. As you come back to your breath, just take a moment to check in, to notice what you notice in the here and the now. If there's any part of you that longs to linger in this shape, by all means, please stay right here as long as you'd like. Whenever you are ready, please investigate or explore movement. You'll allow small, gentle movement to enter the physical form.
Those in stillness stay as long as you'd like. Those in movement, you'll gently start to make your way over to one of your sides. Gently, you'll roll your chest more towards the floor. You'll press into the top hand and you'll draw your spine up to vertical. I do encourage you to take the opportunity to sit tall and to sit well once you are upright. And then when you are vertical, notice where you can sit, where the shoulder blades are on the back where the heart stays open. You might feel like you need to draw the chin back slightly to keep the neck long and then soften any tension around your mouth and around the throat. And we'll just take a few audible breaths here before we end with a breath in and a breath out. At the end of your next exhalation, gently draw your hands to heart center on Juli Mudra. Press the hands into each other. Receive the weight of the thumbs into your sternum and lift your heart towards your hands. Gently exhale all the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in. Audible breath out. Inhale for Om. Join if you'd like. Om. To that light, to that breath, and to that spirit. We bow. Namaste.